Hi, I'm Alan from The Chili Dog. Since many knitters are confused and a little bit intimidated by the heel shaping for knit socks, today we're going to look at the anatomy of three common heel shaping methods for socks that are knit from the top down and compare how they fit your feet. I've stitched up three socks using my Ready, Set, Go socks pattern. All three socks are worked from the cuff down to the toe. All three socks are the same size, both the circumference of the socks and the length of the sole. And all three socks were made with the same kind of yarn on the same size needles. The only difference besides the color is the heel shaping method that was used for each sock. The blue sock has what's known as a short row heel. The yellow sock has a flap and gusset heel, and the green sock has a gusset heel with no flap. Since the heels are shaped differently, they fit differently, and you may find that one type of heel is more comfortable on your feet than the others. First, let's take a look at how each of the heels is formed and then we'll compare how these three socks fit your feet. Let's get started. The flap and gusset heel is often the first heel sock knitters attempt. It's made up of three parts. The heel flap at the back of the foot, the turn heel at the bottom of the foot, and the gussets at the sides of the foot. Since we're talking about cuff down socks, I'm going to flip the sock over. So we're looking at it more as if we were knitting. The sock starts with the cuff and the leg, which are worked in rounds. The stitches are usually divided on your needles so that half of the stitches are the front of the leg and half of the stitches are at the back of the leg. The shaping starts with a heel flap. The heel flap is just a rectangular section that's worked back and forth in rows across the back of the foot, while the stitches that are at the front of the foot are held out of the way and remain unworked. After the heel flap is formed, the heel is turned. And there are some different ways to shape a turn heel, but the most common is this trapezoid shape. Sock patterns include specific instructions for how to turn the heel, but very generally speaking, the turn heel is worked in short rows and each row is going to be one stitch longer than the last row. After the heel is turned, it's time to start knitting in rounds again. Stitches are picked up along the sides of the heel flap. Then you knit across all of the held instep stitches. Pick up stitches on the other side of the heel flap. And then knit across the turn heel stitches. Finally, the heel has a shaped gusset where decreases are made on each side of the foot. Even though the gusset of a sock is where this side shaping occurs, in a knitting pattern, the gusset refers to all of the rounds from the edge of the flap to the beginning of the foot where the gusset shaping is taking place right in here. After the gusset is complete, the foot and the toe are knit in rounds. Gusset heels are made up of two parts, the gusset and the turn heel at the bottom of the foot. There is no rectangular flap and no picked up stitches. 
Since we're talking about cuff down socks, I'm gonna flip the sock over so we're looking at it more as if we were knitting. The sock starts with the cuff and the leg, which are worked in rounds. And the stitches are usually going to be divided on your needles with half the stitches at the front of the leg and half the stitches at the back of the leg. The gussets are where stitches are increased at the sides of the foot. Even though the gusset of the sock is where the shaping occurs, in a knitting pattern, the gusset refers to all of the rounds from the base of the leg to the beginning of the foot as the gusset rounds. After the gusset is complete, the heel is turned, very similarly to the flap and gusset heel. The turn heel is worked in short rows at the bottom of the foot, while the instep stitches are held out of the way and temporarily remain unworked. Each row of the turn heel is going to be one stitch longer than the previous row. When the turn heel is complete, the remainder of the foot and the toe is worked in rounds. Short row heels are worked in two parts. The first part is at the back of the leg. The second part is at the bottom of the foot. Generally, short row heels don't have a flap or gusset, and there are no picked up stitches. Again, since we're talking about cuff down socks, I'm going to flip the sock over so we're looking at it more as if we would when we're knitting. The sock starts with the cuff and the leg, which are worked in rounds. And again, the stitches are usually divided on your knitting needles so that half of the sock stitches are at the front of the leg and half of the sock stitches are at the back of the leg. The first half of the heel is worked in rows across the back of the leg while the instep stitches are held out of the way and remain unworked. Each heel row is one stitch shorter than the last and each heel row ends with a special sort of turning stitch. I'm currently aware of five different methods to create the turning stitches, but that is going to have to be a topic for another day. The second half of the heel is also worked in short rows, but this time each row is one stitch longer than the last and uses those special turning stitches on the side to close up any holes that would otherwise form at the end of the rows. When the heel is complete, it's time to work in rounds again for the remainder of the foot and then the toe. One reason the flap and gusset heel is the shaping method most sock knitters learn first is that it fits the average adult foot fairly well. The sock circumference at the top of the instep is just a little bit larger than the circumference at the base of the toe. Regular flap and gusset socks are a good fit for people with an average instep, but not all people have an average instep. So let's compare our flap and gusset heel to the gusset heel. I'm just going to line up the tip of the toe and the base of the heel. And you can see here that the gusset heel sock has just a slightly larger circumference at the top of the instep. Also, if we turn things kind of on the edge, the length of the instep for the gusset heel is a little bit longer to accommodate that higher instep. So gusset heels are a good fit for people with a little bit higher than average instep. Finally, our short row heel sock. And again, I'm just going to line up the tip of the toe and the base of the heel. And you can see here, that this circumference at the top of the short row heel instep is smaller than the other two styles. 
And if we turn things on its side again, you'll notice that the length of the instep for the short row heel is a lot shorter than the other two socks. So short row heels are a good fit for people who have a little bit lower than average instep. I hope you enjoyed comparing the construction and the fit of three different top-down heel shaping methods. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to try these three methods in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my Ready, Set, Go socks pattern. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!